welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Edward VI. But on this day in Tudor history, the 23rd of August 1548, Francis Talbot, 5th Earl of Shrewsbury, arrived at the Siege of Haddington in East Lothian, Scotland, with a large army. The siege was actually part of a series of sieges at Haddington, which were all part of the Anglo-Scottish War, known as the War of the Rough Wooing. I love that name. So named because it had been started in 1543 by King Henry VIII in a bid to secure a marriage um, arrangement between England and Scotland, between his son, Prince Edward, who was, of course, the future King Edward VI, and Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, if you hear some panting in the background, it is not me out of breath. It is a big dog under the kitchen counter here who's very hot. James Hamilton, 2nd Earl of Arran and Regent of Scotland, had taken Haddington in September 1547 with the help of the French. But English troops led by William Grey, 13th Baron Grey de Wilton and Sir Thomas Palmer took Haddington in February 1548 and set about fortifying it. It came under heavy attack from French and Scots troops in July 1548, so English reinforcements became necessary. Shrewsbury's arrival led to the French and Scottish armies abandoning the siege and moving to Edinburgh and Leith. The Imperial Ambassador Francois van der Delft recorded the English victory in a dispatch to the Emperor, writing, These people, the English, have every day been receiving good news from their forces defending Haddington. They report that the French besieging army were powerless to do them much harm and that in spite of the enemy, the defenders had been reinforced by 3,000 men, each carrying a good stock of powder. Many Frenchmen, moreover, it is stated, are falling daily and Peter Strozzi himself, they assert, has been mortally wounded. Finally, the protector has received intelligence that the camp of the enemy has been broken up and the Scotsmen have all retired, owing to some dissension between the Regent of Scotland and Monsieur Desse. This news has produced great rejoicing here. However, the ambassador wasn't sure about this information, as he was also hearing of French attacks. On the 29th of August, Baron Grey wrote to Protector Somerset asking for licence to come home from Scotland, saying, Now we have put Haddington out of peril and field service need not long endure, as I am quit of my last commission of lieutenantship. I trust your grace will licence me to come home and live on my small portion while seeking to win back what is wrongfully kept from me. I've often showed your grace that the great charges above my diets have brought me in debt and now by my late great loss I can endure it no longer for my reputation is decayed or through credit I might have borne it till your grace relieved my poverty but if at home I may a while spare and so be better able to serve again when your grace commands me. If you could see the bottom of my poverty and in how poor sort I shall be forced to live and in what miserable estate I shall leave my wife and children over that I might have done in the beginning of the war, ye would not suffer me to run to further ruin as I shall open and declare at my repair to your grace. And as you promised, I should be here but a year, which now is full complete. I beseech your grace's leave home to avoid the utter destruction of me and my posterity. Oh dear, it sounds like his service in Scotland had caused him a lot of problems, financial problems. Sir James Wilford, who had commanded the Italian and German mercenary forces at Haddington, wrote to Somerset from Haddington on the 1st of November 1548, describing the dismal situation there. The state of this town pities me both to see and to write it, but writing to your grace I hope for relief. Many are sick and a great number dead, most of the plague. On my faith, there are not here this day of horses, foot and Italians, 1,000 able to go to the walls and more like to be sick than the sick to mend. For they watch every fifth night, yet the walls are not manned. They lie in litter without beds. 
go in their single white coats for there is small provision of clothing. The houses are so beaten, they lie in cabins, the corn in store like to be spoilt in foul weather, great lack of labourers and want of all things. I fear the enemy more now than when they were before the town in their pride. A few horsemen are wearied with convoys of five or six load at a time. The Almains, the Germans, promised by your grace are not yet come. I doubt getting relief till I speak with your grace myself, for which I beg license when the time is meet. The Almains well settled, and some wet weather to fill the ditches and make foul ways to hinder the enemy, for whom, as the weather is, I look daily. The English troops eventually withdrew from Haddington in September 1549. They'd used up their supplies, they'd suffered heavy losses from the plague and from attacks by the Scots. The rough wooing came to an end in March 1550 with the Treaty of Boulogne, and in 1551, following the Treaty of Norham, the English withdrew from Scotland. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 23rd of August 1535, royal favourite and keen reformer Sir Nicholas Points welcomed King Henry VIII and his second wife Anne Boleyn to his home, Acton Court, in Iron Acton, South Gloucestershire, as part of the couple's royal progress. It was important for courtiers to impress the king and his consort, and Points built a new wing on his property just for the royal couple. And you can find out more about that in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to in the description. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to this channel and please do by clicking just there, that button just there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.